Hello, I'm Sarah. Welcome to our Giant Thorny Stick Insect Care Guide. This video is for you if perhaps you're thinking of buying some stick insects from us as pets, or maybe you have some already and you just want to learn a little bit more about how to look after them. What we're going to go through is giant thorny stick insects, how you can tell the difference between the different ages and sexes, as well as how to set up a tank for them and look after that tank at home. So if you have bought some stick insects from us, then they will arrive in a little pot like this. Within the pot, we've got some paper towel and that stops them banging around. And there's also a leaf, which is a bit of feed for the journey. These are nymphs, they're young stick insects. And what they will do is they will molt as they grow. So they'll shed their exoskeletons. You may therefore find a shed skeleton in the box with them. It will look a little bit like this and it almost looks like a dead stick insect but they need to do that to grow so don't worry at all that's completely normal. I'll pop those back here. What they will then do is they will get bigger and bigger and eventually as those nymphs grow they will finally turn into adults and as they get older you'll be able to start telling the difference between the male and female. On here we've got a female and a male and you can already see that the female's a lot bigger than the male. Female giant thorny stick insects can reach up to about 13 centimetres long. The male's only about 10 centimetres. And you can see the male is a little bit more active, he's slimmer. The female's much wider so she can actually carry eggs inside her. And she's got a point at the end of her abdomen, the end of her body. That's her egg laying tube, her ovipositor. So don't worry, that point isn't going to hurt you in any way. She just uses that to, to drop her eggs out of. You can as well tell that the stick insects are a little bit of a different colour. They come in really variable colours. The males are usually less mottled than the females. They've got more of a stripy pattern to them, whereas the females look a little bit more, I guess, like tree bark. Um, sometimes some are dark, sometimes they're light, and it really depends on where they've been residing, where they've been hanging out in their tank. If they've been sitting in quite a damp area, then they'll get quite dark. Otherwise, they'll, they'll be fairly lighter if they've been sitting in a dry area. And you don't need to worry about that at all. The only thing is, is if your stick insects go an almost dark brown black colour, all of them, then perhaps your tank could be a little bit too damp. So that's one thing to look out of. If there's one damp stick insect that's a bit dark, that's fine. If they're all dark, then maybe think about making the tank a little less damp. So those stick insects, the male and female, need to mate to be able to have offspring. They'll mate and then she will lay some eggs. And what a lot of people worry about is how on earth are we going to tell the difference between eggs and poo? And it's actually really easy. They look very, very different. As soon as you've seen an egg, you'll know what you're looking for. Um, an egg is a few millimetres long and it's a dark charcoal grey colour. It's, it's an oval shape, whereas their poos are much smaller um, and much longer and thinner, like a cylinder. And they're a bit more mottled, a little bit rougher in texture as well. So very, very different. Only the adult stick insects will lay eggs, the females will lay eggs, and you need a male and a female to be able to produce eggs. For some species of stick insects, the females can actually make clones of themselves. And so you end up with a lot of eggs very quickly and the population can get out of control. That doesn't happen with this species. But the females still can lay a good number of eggs. So what you want to do is when you start seeing eggs appearing at the bottom of the tank in what we call the substrate, whatever you put on the bottom, you want to make sure that you only let the number of eggs hatch to, for you to have the number of stick insects that you can look after. Because you want to look after your stick insects really well. It's much better to have fewer stick insects and look after them properly, rather than have lots and lots and not look after them as well. Because they're animals, so we need to make sure that we, we really treat them with respect. So, if you start seeing eggs, the eggs will hatch into very small nymphs. They're about up to two centimetres long. They're really, really cute. And what I would suggest you do is wait for the number to hatch that you want to look after. So maybe you want five nymphs to hatch. As soon as those five nymphs have hatched, take away the substrate, so the stuff on the bottom of the tank, pop it in a box or a bag, tie it up, 
and put it in the freezer for at least a week and that will then stop any more of the eggs hatching. So it will kill the eggs and you won't get overrun with stick insects and then you can take that out of the freezer and throw it away. And that's a really good way to keep on top of your population of stick insects. Um, you don't want to be having too many don't release them into the environment. These ones are not native species here in the UK. Uh, they won't survive a UK winter, but it is not good practice to release anything into the wild. So it's really important to, to keep on top of, of your stick insects. So as your nymphs hatch and start wandering around, um, you need to make sure, if you've only got small, small nymphs, that they can feed. So you want them to be near their feed. These, these insects feed, well, we feed them on bramble. And they can sometimes find it a little bit difficult to bite into the bramble when they're young. So what you want to do is you can just tear some of the bramble leaves for them and that gives them a little way in so they can start eating. And we've got some small, newly hatched nymphs in here. You can actually see one has started on a, a bramble leaf here. And then they grow into these nymphs here. And they molt and then grow, molt and grow. And the whole life cycle takes about a year, a year and a half. So it's really fascinating to, to be able to actually watch that metamorphosis in action, seeing the life cycle. It's an incomplete metamorphosis because they don't totally change. They just molt and then look more and more like the adult as they, as they get larger. So those are our giant thorny stick insects. We, we know a little bit now about how to tell the males from the females and what to expect when you have your, your delivery of, of giant thorny stick insects. The next thing to do is, okay, what to do next? I've got my box of stick insects, what do I do with them? So you want to have a tank to keep them in. You've got lots of choice of, of what kind of tank to use. The most important thing is that it's well ventilated. You need to have lots of air flowing through the tank to stop it going mouldy. And that's one of the biggest killers of these stick insects, is actually mould. So we sell fornarios. We've got a medium and a large size fornarium here. This is it's a pop-up porter bug that we also sell, so it's a mesh-sided container, and you can actually see from the top what's going on inside. That's great for one or two stick insects. Um, or you could make your own tank at home. This one here is just made from an old ice cream box. Um, we've drilled holes in the side and covered it with an insect mesh so they can't get out. And then we've cut a section, a window, out of the top of the box lid and then glued in some insect mesh using a glue gun. So the glue gun works really well because the hot glue melts the insect mesh and, and really welds it onto the box and that stops them getting out. And we sell squares of, of insect mesh so that you can customise your own boxes at home, whether it be a plant pot or a bucket or a big truck or any kind of big box. The main thing to remember is that your, your tank should be about three times the height of the length of your stick insects. So if you're wanting to keep stick insects until they're adults, make sure you think about that before designing your tank. And you want to have a mesh top or a top that's got sort of grips on it because the stick insects will hang themselves from the top of the tank they'll attach themselves and then they'll slip out of their skeleton and drop out. So if you don't have enough height, they won't be able to molt properly and you'll see some molt still stuck on your stick insects. If that does happen, the best thing to do is to increase the humidity. So give them a little bit of a spray with some water and that can sometimes soften that molt and just help them out. You don't want to be pulling it off um, yourself because you may, you may actually damage them. So that's basically where we get to with getting your stick insect ready. What I'm going to show you now is how you set up the tank at home. I'm going to move that out of the way. And let's set this one up. So this is the large fornarium, and you can just lift the top off like that. And you can use all sorts of different things for a substrate. It really doesn't matter. The only thing you have to be really careful of is that it's pesticide free. So if you're adding in soil, compost, vermiculite, it ideally will be chemical free. The other thing you can use is tissue paper. So these are just some paper towels. And it may not look the prettiest, but it's actually a really efficient way 
of managing your stick insert. So you just lay a paper towel in the bottom, make sure it laps up the edges. I'm going to just pop a second one in. There we go. And that will then collect all of the eggs, all of the poos. And what you can then do is you can just fold up the paper towels, pop them in the freezer for a week ideally, take them out and throw them away. Um, if you have soil or something like this actually as well, this is coconut coir or fibre, um, you can put that in the bottom. You don't have to be changing it all the time, but what you want to do is to pull off any dead leaves or poos that are starting to look like they might go mouldy on the surface. It, it looks much nicer when you use something like this as a substrate, but it's totally up to you. But it's actually, it's really fun. You can design your tank as like a little kind of insect habitat. You could, I don't know, you could create an assault course. You could make it look like a garden. You could make it look like anything you want to, because if you're gonna have this in your home, I guess you want it to look pretty. So for now though, it's about practicality. And the first thing we need to pop in is a little jug or glass jar of water. And this is to sit the insect feed in. So this is really good because it hasn't got too big a hole at the top. If you have a really big hole, the stick insects could fall in and drown. So a glass jar we're using of water goes straight in. And then the feed. Bramble grows almost everywhere, so it's a great thing to feed your stick insects on. They will also feed on other plants such as ivy or hawthorn, but we find ours do really well on bramble and you can collect it year round. The bramble that you're looking for has big leaves. This is a perfect bit of bramble. You actually go on a walk and start hunting out good brambling spots and you get, we get really excited when we see bramble like this. What they don't like so much is this sort of bramble. So this is fresh growth. The leaves are a lime green colour. This isn't so good for them. You want dark green leaves, the bigger the better. And it's really important that you collect bramble where there have been no pesticides sprayed. So if you're collecting bramble as well at the side of roads, it's well worth giving it a wash before feeding it to them just to get rid of any traffic fumes. Right, so to get it into the tank, you may want to wear gloves because it is covered in really sharp thorns, uh, but we're just used to getting them into our fingers. And you don't want leaves to be in the water jar, otherwise it's gonna make it go really stinky really quickly. So cut the bottom leaves off, like this. And then you actually don't need too much. So it's really, really tempting to give your stick insects loads of feed and be really nice to them. But that's the worst thing you can do. If you cram your tanks full of bramble, that bramble will either go crispy and dry really quickly, or it will go mouldy. And neither of those are very good for your stick insects. So if you've got four or five stick insects, you don't want to be giving them much more bramble than this. And what you can do is you can just see over time how much they eat in a couple of days. And you want to refresh your bramble every couple of days. Make sure you refresh the water too, give the jar a good clean out, ideally without chemicals. When you're cleaning your tank out generally, just use water if you can. And if you do need to use any, any form of disinfectant, use a mild one and give it a good rinse afterwards. So bramble goes in, that's still a little bit too high for my tank, but I can just move that to the side. I'm gonna just do another little chop there. Uh, I don't think that's gonna work, I'm gonna have to chop it down there. And um, what I'm gonna do is maybe put a second bit of bramble in now. So get another bit from down here. And let's get that all ready as well to go in. So, here we go. And that's in too. So that's ready for your stick insects. I'll turn that around so you can see the nice front bit of the bramble. Here we go. Great. And you can make it look as pretty as you want. Um, and you can, you can really play around with, with where you put the bramble in your tank. Tank's ready, and now it's a matter of adding the stick insects. So a lot of people who have visited us here at the bug farm may have done one of our up close meet the bug sessions, and that's where you get to handle some stick insects and other, other creatures. And often we handle the adult stick insects, so people are quite nervous when they get the nymphs. They think, how am I gonna handle these? But the principle is exactly the same. What you want to be doing is not grabbing them. So you don't ever want to pick a stick insect up. You want the stick insect to walk onto you. And you learn over time how to get them to do that. And it just takes a little bit of patience. 
So I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see how I'm doing it. So pop the tank there. I want these stick insects in the box to walk on my hand. Best way of getting a stick insect to move is tickle it. Tickle its back legs and it will move away from that tickling. And then you can tickle its legs from the left to make it go to the right and then from the right to make it go to the left. And what you want is your stick insect to be moving in the direction of travel that you want it to be going in. So there's one on the front of the box here. I would like this stick insect to go on my hand. So I'm going to gently tickle the back legs. And there we go, he's on my hand. And he'll just wander around on my hand. They quite often like walking uphill because they think we're trees and they want to walk up the tree to get the freshest leaves on the top. So you want to make a little step to get your stick insect to walk up onto your other hand. And if you don't want him on this hand, you just wiggle that hand, make it a little bit uncomfortable, and that will make him move on to the next hand. So again, a little step, and up he goes. So you can then get him to come up there, and if I want him to move that way, I can just give him a little nudge. So if, when you're doing that, if you're trying to move them and you feel them gripping onto you, almost like sticky weed or Velcro, then you know you're being too tough or too rough with them. So you just want to hardly feel them walking on you. Move them so they're in the right direction before then they walk onto what you want them to walk onto. And they're great fun to handle. They can walk up your arm if you like, they can sit on your shoulder, perch on your head. They're really, really interactive. Um, and so brilliant for, for children and adults to really, really learn and engage with. So I'm gonna pop him in the tank now. So he's going the right way. And I'm gonna give him a little nudge. So on that leaf please, there we go, and he's on. And I'll do the same with the others, so this one can go in. And what you can do as well, quite often your stick insects may fall off your hands, and I cannot say enough that that is absolutely fine. If you drop your stick insect, do not panic. They are really used to falling. It's much better that they fall rather than you grab them and hang on to them. They won't hurt themselves, they're very, very light, so they'll just walk away. I mean, imagine they live in the top of trees, they're always falling off leaves. So what you want to do is if your stick insect, say, has fallen onto the table, so like, let's pop her onto the table here, there we go, you want to pick her up and you think, what do I do? You can either give her a push from behind onto your hand, or you can put one hand either side, or some fingers one side and a thumb the other side, gently tickle her legs, and that tickling will stop her gripping on the table. If you were to pick her up now, she would stick really firm to the table. So I'm going to gently tickle either side, and she's let go of the table, and now she's on me. So it's a really nice, easy way to get her to walk onto you. So I'll pop her in on that leaf there. And sometimes they walk the wrong way, and it, you can't, there are some that you just can't get off your hands. Um, and so you just have to be really patient of just making sure that they go the right direction. We've just got two more in here to pop in. There we go, she can walk upside down. I'm just gonna have my hand underneath her just in case she falls. Again, if she did, it really doesn't matter. She can pop in there and then oh, she can take her leaf in with her. So that's the stick insects into the tank. You can handle them every day. Just, just be really gentle with them. And if you've got young children, it's just a matter of, you can quite often get them to hold them on the top of their hand rather than the underside if you think they might grab, and that works fairly well. So they're all in, and now I need to just put the top on. Ah, no I don't. One more thing, grab a garden spray bottle. You want to have a clean one, don't use one that's had pesticides in before, otherwise that will kill your stick insects. So fill that with tap water, and every couple of days, just give the leaves in the tank a little bit of a spray. And that means the stick insects can have a bit of a drink at the same time as eating. You don't need to give them a water dish as well, that will be absolutely plenty. So there we go, we'll spray the leaves. And maybe a bit on the side of the tank, so they can use that as well. And if you want to provide something else for them to climb on, a dry stick like this is perfect. You don't want to use a wet stick because that will go mouldy. So mould is your ultimate nemesis, so you want to keep your stick insect tank away from mould. So he's now trying to wander out, so I'm going to pop him back in again, back on that leaf. And if your tank, when you go to it a couple of days later, is starting to collect water around the outside and it's starting to get condensation inside it, that means you're keeping it too damp or there's not enough ventilation. So you can see these are, they're great escape artists. As soon as you get them in, they want to climb out again. So you have to go back in. So you can either just gently push them down 
or you can lift them off. So she's now going back downhill. He is on his leaf and I can put the lid on. If you've got nymphs or lots of stick insects, you don't quite know where they are, check the lid on the underside before you put it back on because you don't want to squish a stick insect in the lid and you don't want to catch an antennae or a leg um, in the lid either. So it's really important to make sure your stick insects are well away when you're putting the lid back on. So they're all safe in here. Where to put your tank? The best place is in a room out of direct sunlight. If you pop it in direct sunlight, you're gonna turn it into a greenhouse. So don't put it on a windowsill because you will overheat your stick insects and they will die. So somewhere away from sun and at normal room temperature. So they do their best at between 20 and 24 degrees Celsius, but they can cope with it being much cooler too. Some people use heat mats to keep the temperature in the tank uh, constant or a bit higher. You generally don't need to with this species, but if you have a very cold house and you'd really like to put a heat mat on, whatever you do, don't put it under the tank because it'll make the tank too hot and the stick insects can't escape from that heat. So pop it on the side of a tank and so the stick insects could either go close to it if they're a bit cold or they could go away from it if they're, if they're plenty warm enough. So that really is, is all there is to it. That gives you stick insects that you can keep breeding for many years to come and they really do make great pets. They're very easy to keep and they're a great learning tool as well. So hopefully if you've enjoyed learning about these stick insects then do have a look at our other YouTube videos. We have other Meet the Bugs videos where we actually we have one on the, the giant thorny stick insects themselves so you can learn even more about them. And if you want to know where to get the thornariums or any of the equipment or buy the stick insects themselves, then have a look at our website as well as our social media pages and enjoy your stick insects.